passed away yesterday in a helicopter crash that also took the life of his 13-year-old daughter, Gianna. There were seven other victims on board the private helicopter. We extend our condolences to the family and friends of them all. As we welcome you into the studio for this special two-hour edition of The Warm-Up, I'm Stephanie Reddy. This is Steve Smith and Sam Mitchell. We'd like to thank you for joining us as we look back at the greatness of Kobe Bryant. We'll share our stories and try to get through this together. Um, first thing before we get to you, gentlemen, we'll have you for two hours to share your thoughts and your memories. We'd like to get to Kenny the Jet Smith, who is joining us now live. Kenny, we appreciate you joining us under these circumstances, and we extend our condolences to you and your family as well. Yeah, same with you guys. This is the NBA family. This is an NBA loss. Uh, you know, obviously, it's tragic, you know, hearing the news about Kobe, but then it became horrific when, when we hear about the, his daughter and the, her friends and teammates and all of those things that's going on. And I, in their families, I just think that it's, um, you know, a deep loss just in, in general for everyone that's involved. It certainly is. And today the NBA made an announcement, Kenny, that they are postponing the Lakers Clippers game tomorrow. They will announce the date, the future date in the future. And I was curious if you had ever seen anything like this before. I don't recall the NBA ever postponing a game aside from a natural disaster or something that eliminated the possibility of even playing in the arena. Yeah, I, I think it's the same. But we've all, you know, I think gone through the same thing. I don't, I, I don't think we've ever seen anything like this. Uh, I think it's a protocol that was definitely needed. Uh, I live here in Los Angeles. Um, I was trying to figure out, I was trying to wrap my head around Stephanie, like, and guys like going to the arena tomorrow. Like, and, and, and for me, it was, it, it hits a little differently in this regard. You know, I never played with Kobe. Uh, you know, we, we've obviously had a lot of interactions, but you know, I would, you know, but the difference is like my AAU basketball teams, we practice at the Mamba Center. So I'm in the Mamba Center, you know, 10, 12 times a, a, a month. You know, my kids see him, his teams, you know, playing. You know, the route that he was, you know, he's flying over. That's the route I drive every day. Uh, his form of carpooling was a, a helicopter. Mine is a minivan. <laughs> so, like, it's the exact same process of where we go. The, the actual hill that he crashed into uh, – my son, myself, my daughters, we run that hill. It's a trail that we run to get in shape in the summer times and even in the winter times. So it's so surreal and, and it's so close that, you know, tomorrow I'm taking my sixth grade basketball team and practicing at the Mamba Center, like possibly. It's, just, it's, it's hard to wrap my head around. Kenny, I, I, you know, it's so much. And, you know, like you said, the NBA families, we've lost so much. Can you just kind of put in words? We know the impact he had as a player, but you're close to him as far as what he had, the impact he had on youth sports for young men and young ladies. Can you kind of put that into words? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Everyone's asking me, like, what's my memory of Kobe? And it's really as a father. Like, I, I, I like out of the – because, Steve, you have sons that play. Mm -hmm. Like, we know that – the odds of making the NBA or playing college basketball are slim. You're really only doing it to spend time with your kids. And then you're taking on other kids. <laughs> like we both have done, you've done, I'm, I'm doing. Like you're taking on other kids and their responsibility just to spend time with your kid. And that's for a guy who is in the position that he's in. And, and, you know, I'm not even saying us, that he's in. Mm -hmm. He could have hired the guy that trained him. He could have, you know, he, but you're doing it as a parent. So I think everyone understands the draining part of it, who's a soccer mom, a team mom, or, or, the, or the coach of a dad coach. We all understand what he was doing yesterday. And we go, damn, that's us. Like, he's doing what we do. Kobe Bryant is. He's going, he, he's going he's down, dumbing down to do what we do. But in actuality, he's doing it in a Mamba fashion. He's like, no, I'm going to be the best AU youth coach that could possibly be, and I'm going to do it with my daughter. And that's what I'm thinking of about him, Steve and, and Stephanie and guys, that, that just take him to, takes it to another level. 
Kenny, Sam Mitchell here, man. You talking about Kobe as a father. I have four daughters. But the player, the guy that we saw on the court, and you know this, Kenny, when we first came in the league and Kobe first came, MJ, the criticism that they was too single-minded, no one can play with him. And then people <laughs> just think about that. I laugh all the time how people used to kill MJ and Kobe. But then when you look at what made them mm -hmm. special, and then you hear people talk about it. Kenny, you play, Smitty play, I play. You have to have a certain selfishness to be great. And the thing that I respect about him, he did that during his playing career. But like, as you said, he had transitioned into being a father. Talk about the two, and then talk about how difficult it is to go from being Kobe Bryant the superstar to being Kobe Bryant the superstar dad. Yeah, you think about that, Sam. Like, I was talking to Mark Jackson, who I grew up with, and we were talking today earlier, and I said to him, I said, what makes him interesting, you know, we're not saying he's a perfect person, but we're saying the great things that he did, he did them greater than we could do. The sacrifices that he made, and we, we've all either seen, heard, been next to, or talked about as, in those NBA locker rooms. Kobe sacrifices this to do that. There are other great players who've been great that would not sacrifice that to be great. And that's what makes you different. That's, what, that's why you have the outpour of respect and love for, in the NBA community because he's doing things, Sam and Steve, that you are all-star, Steve, that you're like, man, I don't know if I'd give that up to be that great. You know, we've all thought about it. Like, man, he's doing that? And he was doing it at 17, 18, 19 years old and saying, like, no, I'm not going to enjoy the spoils of it. So when we talk about Mamba mentality, he has a mentality that now was bleeding into being a dad, a superstar dad. And he's like, and at least visually. What, like, we, we were seeing now his family. He's like, all these years it's been about me, and now I'm going to try to make it about my family. You know what I'm saying, guys? Like, we, when Gigi, unfortunately, when she passed yesterday as well, that wasn't the first time 90% of us had seen her face. Right. Like, there, there's a lot of superstar players that I would not, if their kids, something happened to, God forbid, I would not know who they are. We knew who Gigi was. It wasn't a surprise to see her face. And that's the difference about the transition that you're talking about, Sam, that I know that you do with your daughters, who, and your, one of your daughters work at TNT, and, like, Steve, your kids, we, I see them all the time and going to college. Like, I understand. We understand what that feels like, and that's what makes it so horrific for us personally because we know what we have to sacrifice to even get those moments. Kenny, you mentioned Kobe as a teenager when he was a rookie in the NBA. It was your last season. I'm curious what your initial impression was of him as a player, and what were the veterans around the league saying about the young Kobe Bryant? Relentless. Like, at first came in, it was like, man, i never seen a guy that, like, he's, like, a little too obsessed. <laughs> like, I used to go, like, what do you mean? He's obsessed. Like, he, he doesn't do things just to be great. He's doing something to be the greatest. And we used to, to laugh about stuff like that. Like, yo, he, he came in at midnight, and he didn't have a basketball. So he imagined, you know, he, so he imagined himself with a ball, and he was shooting without a ball. Stories that you go, no, nah, there's no balls. If I can't get in, the lock is run. I'm going home. Like, <laughs> you're saying, Steve, like, you go to the gym. The, lock, the, the ball rack is locked up. You're like, I'm not shooting tonight. <laughs> it's not him. Like, those are the kind of stories you would hear. And you go, man, this guy has something that, you know, yeah, we heard Mike might be like that, too. Or guys would say, that's about it. No one else. Kenny, we appreciate your time so much. Thank you for joining us here on the warm-up again. Our condolences and wish you a better night tonight. Yes, and, I, and, and, and I'm and God and Steve, and, 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 and as we go, you guys are there two hours, Stephanie. Second hour will come. Let's start to celebrate and not mourn as much because we can celebrate what he's doing, has done. You know, like I said, we're not saying he's a perfect person and none of us are, but we're saying that he was a mamba in the areas of being great in those areas. He was a mamba. True. So That's true, it, Kenny. Kenny. Thanks, man. I like sure that is. sentiment. <clears throat>
And uh, Kenny the Jet Smith works with Charles Barkley over on TNT. This was the statement that Charles Barkley released on the passing of Kobe Bryant. He says, quote, first, I want to express my deepest condolences to the families and friends of all nine people killed in this tragedy. I really want to emphasize that in remembrance of the other seven people involved. For me, this is like losing a family member to lose Kobe and his daughter, Gianna. Basketball is a close knit fraternity and I'm just sad, really sad. My thoughts and prayers are with Vanessa and their girls, the Lakers family and every basketball fan.